almost every uh, country in Europe. They cannot, all of them, be making up a story for 40-some years around the world of seeing the same type of what is described as a non-human creature, whether it's associated with animals or whether it's associated with beams of light and the abduction syndrome, something is interacting with our planet. And the government has told me, anyway, that we do have knowledge of extraterrestrials. If any of this government documentation is real, that some sort of an extraterrestrial non-human intelligence so sophisticated that it could take evolving primates and manipulate DNA and create us is absolutely true. If that is true, probably a good part of the population on the planet would resist it and deny it because it goes against the grain of what we have been taught. And in realizing that and having to speak in the public and produce books and documentaries, respecting the fact that we in the human family have been so ingrained that we are a natural evolutionary life on this planet, how do I, how do any of us deal with the possibility that we are something other and that another life form could have provoked our creation? If the math on the pages suddenly becomes a reality, human life on this Earth will change for all time. The planet will never, ever again be as we have known the planet to be. That's why it's a huge revolution. Once we finally, as a globe, say to everyone with CNN and all networks, we're not alone, ladies and gentlemen. Here's extraterrestrial A, B, C, D, E. There are planetary systems throughout this universe. There are galaxies filled with life. Then an entire new ocean, it's the biggest frontier, opens up in front of us. And rather than be afraid of it, I think we ought to go forward with courage. In the mysterious origins of man, we examined archaeological evidence which directly contradicts many of our accepted theories about the history of man on Earth. 
Modern human artifacts have been found in all layers of geological strata, some going back hundreds of millions of years. Footprints of man were found side by side with dinosaur tracks. There is no conclusive evidence to prove that man evolved from apes. An ancient city high in the mountains of Bolivia may have been built by an advanced culture unknown to history. The theory of crustal displacement could explain the mystery of the Ice Ages and the disappearance of Atlantis. In this companion tape, our groundbreaking experts will present new material in an open dialogue, free from the constraints of network television. Plus, a radical theory which suggests that the mystery of man's origins may be linked to beings from another world. In their book, Forbidden Archaeology, Michael Cremo and Dr. Richard Thompson uncovered numerous cases which suggest that modern man could be millions of years older than history tells us. Well, we called our book Forbidden Archaeology because we wanted to take people on a tour of the locked rooms in the museums of human history. According to most standard accounts, human beings like ourselves have only been around 100,000 years or so. But the evidence that we catalog in forbidden archaeology takes human history back tens of millions, even hundreds of millions of years. I could briefly recount one interesting uh, story that we uncovered. It's the story of a uh, discovery of a bola stone. A bola stone is a uh, stone with a groove cut in it. Uh, a leather thong is tied to that, and it's used for, for throwing to, to capture animals. So this bola stone was found embedded in the surface of a cliff in South America. Uh, the rock of that cliff dated to about two to three million years ago. So the, the man who made the discovery knew that there would be skepticism if he announced something like this. So he left the stone in place, just barely showing on the surface of the cliff. And he got several prominent uh, experts in uh, geology and archaeology to gather there. And in front of these experts, he then chipped the stone out of the cliff. The experts verified that the stone of that cliff really would be what's called Pliocene, dating to two to three million years ago. And they saw him chip it out. They saw that it was actually embedded in the rock. And they saw that it was actually a man-made object. So what do you think then was the, the result? Did people then accept uh, scientifically that Man must have existed two to three million years ago in South America? No, not at all. Uh, a, one of the, the authorities who was there wrote in his report that, well, it may be that somehow he hoaxed the, the find. Uh, he may have uh, dug a hole in the cliff and prepared a cement that looked just like the rock, cemented the bowl of stone in place, and, and fooled us all. So in this way, the evidence then was dismissed. In the 1970s, Mary Leakey, it's the wife of Louis Leakey, who was one of the greatest anthropologists of the century, found at a place called Leitoli in Kenya, a set of modern human footprints in volcanic ash that was dated to be three million years old. Now this is quite extraordinary because According to standard views, human beings like ourselves are only about 100,000 years old. So to find these footprints, which are no different than the footprints you would find on a beach today in ash that's three million years old is quite extraordinary. Unfortunately, the mindset of the scientists who looked at these prints was such that they could not reach the obvious conclusion that the beings who made these footprints, which are exactly like ours, must have been very much like us. The only thing that they could say is that whoever was around at that time, whatever type of ape man was around at that time, must have had very human-like feet, which is something that's not borne out by the fossil evidence.